cheers to the queers. Cheers to the queers. I sound loud. Is that too much? No, not at all. You okay. sound great. All right, cool. You sound wonderful. Hi. Hi. How, how are, are you? you? I'm great. How are you? Oh my god, wonderful. I'm wonderful. Wonderful and fantastic. You got a beautiful voice. Oh yeah, I mean stunning. Stun you're a fucking stunner. Stunning. Seriously, like I should go on to America's Best Voice. What was that show? It's America's Best Voice. That one. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. The singing show yes. with the guy who's mean. Is uh, that still on? Jim Carrey. Yes. No, it wasn't Jim Carrey. It was the oh, other no, you're guy, right. the um, British guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais. No. Yeah. No, it wasn't Ricky Gervais. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Hugh Grant. It was Hugh Grant. Sure. <laughs> it's totally not Hugh Grant. He's... No, it was The Rock. I'm so stupid. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, The yeah, Rock. Because he's so British. Yeah. Yeah, it was. My week was eventful. It was good. Um, I am house sitting per usual. Um, and we had a, a snowstorm and I had some car issues. So literally, I feel like most of my week was spent um, dusting cars. What do you do when you clearing cars of the snow um, and moving cars? I mean, you can be dusting them. Also. That's fair. Yeah, I was not dusting. But you I was can dust the snow off or... Shout out to Adrian, by the way, uh, my friend who is really fucking clever and funny. And she gets these like we have these inside jokes and she brings gifts. Like one time we I was talking to my friend Emily and we were talking about having like a meat guy, which sounds really weird <laughs> out of context. But you know how like in old timey you had like a milk guy and stuff like that? Yeah, and, like Alice, like Sam the Butcher bringing Alice the meat. Yeah, I don't know who those are. Those people are from the but, Brady Bunch. Oh, I thought that was like outward, but okay. Yeah. So, um, again, not a show I've seen, but so yeah. So we were talking about like my friend Emily and I were talking about having like a meat guy, and we ran into another friend of mine, Adrian, at Soho, and we all kind of got into this conversation. It was like a running joke, right? Well, one day I come home and there's a fucking kavasa on my front door with my name on it, <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Okay, this was a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. So I called my mom because I thought my mom was like, I don't know, like, but aren't so, you vegan? Is she, but yeah, but my mom, yes, yes, but my mom likes to, like, she used to, not really so much anymore, but her and like Gary would grocery shop and she drops off. I don't know. And my mom doesn't probably keep up on my dietary habits as much. So I was like, do you leave? Kobasa on my porch and she's like what no and it was like days later that I figured out it was like a, like a paper bag wrapped with my name on it that it was Adrian oh my god for the that's meek, I think. so great well, the, the whole reason I'm telling the story again because I'm such a roundabout storyteller is that she um I was telling my roommates that one day my car was frozen, right? Like snow on it, ice and everything. And I didn't have an ice scraper. So I f had this fake axe that I got from a Halloween party at Soho that I just used to chop the ice on my window. Perfect. Yeah. It was dangerous, but it was fine. Like it was good. You know, I got most of the ice off and stuff. She so must have heard that. So she. Dangerous. I mean, like it's plastic, right? Yeah. But I was hitting the windows. And so I was a little afraid that like they could crack. You know, because you have to hit it kind of hard to break the ice. Um, well, Adrian overheard this, and she was so lovely, and she showed up to the house one day with a fucking, like, all-star ice scraper. And Aww. I've never had one. <laughs> so I just have to say shout-out to Adrian because it made this whole week easier because his ice scrapers are the real deal. Yo, Adrian. Yeah, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> but so I had this, like, and it's not only an ice scraper, but it has, like, a little broom at the other end. Beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Who knew that fucking ice scrapers, they make it so much easier. I mean, you know, listen, a good windshield wiper is also. I don't, I don't have those. Though. Neither do I. I never do. That's the thing. I feel like the second I get a new pair, like it becomes winter again and things get frozen and ice deforms everything. So <laughs> right? it's like, they're never good ever again. Other than like the first time you put them on. Yeah. I had, I have, um, God, I'm so weirdly cheap with some things uh sushi oh spend hundreds of dollars no problem daily all the time buying food like stuff i can't afford fucking i've had the same windshield waivers for five years and the oh best part God. is is i just switch them because <laughs> i just need the driver's side one better so when that one goes bad i switch them 
and I just keep switching them. Oh my and god! The guy, my guys at the oil change place. I go to the same oil change place. Um, shout out to the oil change place in Ferndale and Nine Mile and Hilton. Those guys are awesome. If you need an oil change, go there. Uh, they did not sponsor us, but they're really good and they're always helpful. They finally put new ones on last time, and he's like, "These are a couple used ones I have. I'm not going to charge you." Oh, that's that's really because nice. They were so bad. Oh, yeah, but um, yeah. So my car, my, my car, my whole week was like, I felt like dicking around with cars and snow, and so it was eventful. That's ugly. I, you know what? Dicking around with cars is just not fun for me at all. I don't want to even own a car at this point. I no? just don't. I don't. I see my, thing- I know I, I have, there is a certain necessity to owning a car, but like the car that I have right now, I love your car. It's too big. I don't need that big of a car. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a gigantic beast of a car. I just need something. She has a Hummer, by the way. <laughs> I need something I people to think you're tiny. A I'm, I'm a baller. Uh, but no, I need something tiny that is just more economical. You know what yeah. I mean? It's an, I mean, what I drive is like a green SUV. I know you think it's brown. It is but brown. It's green. I'm not exactly sure what kind of car it is, but it's big. It's a monster. I don't, it's just too big for me. I and I like your car a lot. I think it's a great size. It's kind of a mid, mid size SUV. It's, it's, it's kind of like the size of a Forester, like a Subaru Forester. Like not no, it's, super big. I feel big. like it's bigger. I don't think it's not like huge. Maybe one of the smaller, older explorers. Like it's not huge. It's not like a. Um, you, like, you, you you can't explain a forester to me or, or uh, explorer. I understand forester because that's what Amy has, but explorer is like meaningless. It's like a, it, other unless you're talking about uh, Star Trek. Why oh, you're a dork? <laughs> um. Well, anyway, yeah. So I, yeah. It's my whole week was. Yeah, that and lots of cars and I, you know, I would think. So I, th- I, I lived in Boston for a while when and not and I didn't have a car. And you definitely do not need a car there. Yeah, but I constantly like I love like escaping for a day. I need a car because it's my my favorite thing in the world to do is drive. I get that, and honestly, like that's one of the things that like. I loved when I lived in a place where it was a lot easier to escape from it. Sure. I mean, to escape from the Metro Detroit area, you have to drive significantly. I can, I can, I can give you escape routes before you actually get escaped. Do you know what I'm saying? Here's the deal. Thing. Here's the deal. It's like when I lived in Kalamazoo, I could go up uh, the main road there, M43. And just turn off after a certain point and just sort of just start wandering and I'd get lost and find lakes everywhere. Yeah. It was was, so beautiful. It's really beautiful out there. But here, a little trick for out here, because I've I've found every route because that's my, I'm obsessed with it. I can't, I can't be still. Um, If you take uh, any of the mile roads, 9, 10, 11, anything, all the way east and you come up to St. Clair Shores, uh, that road there will take you north and it is one of the most beautiful drives. So if you just keep heading north, it'll basically take you on the outside of the thumb. So you'll do like a lake tour first, but then you'll get to like Marine City. But you've got to take that eight, um, nine or whatever yeah, mile uh, all the way up to that's from talking. Yeah. And it is about 14 that's, miles. You're right. That's it's a 14 drive. miles. You can't. You're right. <laughs> listen, it's literally I think it's like 11 miles. So don't listen to Evie if you're in Michigan. But let me finish real quick because you take if you take that north a little bit and you get like past Marine City, there's marshes and it is so beautiful up there in the marshes. And you can like there's places to pull off and park and you can walk through. And it's I mean, it literally looks like you're in a different state, like looks like you're almost in like um, uh, like Cape Cod or something like it's it's got the like straw not straw, but like the. You know, that kind of like the, the tall vegetation. Grass. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's just, it's so beautiful. And then it has all the, um, uh, the little canals too. And then if you keep heading North, I mean, you can take it all the way up to Port Austin and it, I mean, it's a, an afternoon, but it's beautiful there. Yeah. So it's wow. an easy drive. It is 11 miles though. So you're right. I'm so sorry. It's not <laughs> walking distance. How was your week by the way? Oh, uh, you know, I don't know. My week was fine. It wasn't, uh, particularly good week it wasn't a particularly bad week I've been you know I've been kind of just going through some stuff and I've just been going through some stuff mm, I and hope everything's okay. oh everything's fine you know it's just like I said you know the turning 50 and all of that shit kind of fucked with me and 
coming home after our trip and all of that stuff. So well, just I, been trying to get myself kind of back on track, you know, yeah. kind of the fake it till you make it kind of thing. Yeah. I know weather affects you and it really does. Coming from LA where it's fucking, even if it's not super warm, it's sunny every day. Like I'm yeah. sure that's, it does definitely. And I don't know. I mean like this week I spent most of my time playing with my dolls and working on the butterfly wings for my drunk butterfly. And that was incredibly satisfying. Okay. But other than that, that's that was pretty much the highlight of my week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is the thick of it. This These next few weeks are kind of the... Exactly. I feel like these are the rough parts of winter where it's just... Yes. This yeah. is the time where it really starts to wear on yeah. my mental health, especially. And it's just like, oh my God. Once February, once February hits, it's the shortest month of winter. Mm -hmm. I start to feel a little bit of hope near the you know middle or end of february so. yeah Just i don't know march weeks. i feel like march is the worst because you think it should be nicer and it's not uh, yeah i don't know i mean like march i feel like there's there is more hope yeah my birthday's in march and yeah. my birthday by is the end always of march, a bad day usually the though like you've had some nice spring days where it like smells you can you can smell the earth coming back to uh. life you can smell the like dirt and the earthworms and the fresh green buds are coming out and it's so beautiful yeah um it's definitely nicer a little further south in uh -huh. a little pineville kentucky a little appalachia oh, yeah spring is really nice there it really yeah. happens early i hear, so. I hear that's yeah. true yeah um no regrets yeah no you gotta live a life without regrets right should we get to topic let's not regret it and okay. get to topic okay The biggest regret for my season is setting everything with banana powder. I was clearly trying to be yellow and a banana, and that's for today, not for season eight. Regrets. I've made a few. I've, I've had a few. Had so many. Or not. Have I? I don't know. Am I a re regretful person? Ooh, that's Have a I good lived question. a regrettable life? And if you have lived a regrettable life, does that like... Is that like a compliment in a way? Like, is that like a good thing? Or is it a thing that you should disdain? I don't know. So I remember thinking, um, actually, I don't remember where I heard this. Something about living a regrettable light life usually results in somebody writing a book about you. It was like, I can't remember the, I can't remember the quote, the context, but it was like, um, you're either the person who writes books or the person that somebody writes a book about you. And if you lived a regrettable life, it's usually the the, you know the latter yeah. so like yeah i That's don't know kind of a fun quote i, I love that I, but i can't remember oh my god i think it's gossip girl <laughs> hey you know what i think it's long chuck bass. live chuck bass i think it's chuck bass and gossip girl <laughs> but you know what i mean like listen we're all about the highbrow like cultural like it, touch points in our society right? and frankly gossip girl is one of the highest brows it really is and people who like disagree are Downers. Thumbs down. Two thumbs down. Um, well, if you haven't gathered already, we this week we we're talking we're about regretfully talking about regrets. Regrets. <laughs> regrets. Do you regret your life? Um, no. Uh, no. Regrets. I, I think regret is a really interesting thing because, in some ways, realistically, I feel like yeah, we all have a lot of regrets. But then there's this other part of us that kind of wants to like hold on to the idea of like no regrets like if I if I were you know if I were to like change things then it wouldn't be where I'm at there has to be like this sort of like innate positivity because it's so hard to wallow in right well I think that like I think that generally speaking when we're talking about not living a life of regret right mm -hmm. we're talking about not missing out on the big opportunities, sure. the, the things that, you know, like the big job offer, the big love interest, the big whatever, you know. Something you have to put yourself out there for. Right, yeah. right. But I feel like it's a lot more nuanced than that. Like, I think when when I was younger, I think that that's how I thought of it. Yeah. In general, like it just in general, like I'm not going to live a life of regret, right? I'm going to make the choices, the big moves. I'm going to do the things, right? Yeah. But I think that it also means like smaller things too, right? Like not regretting not just the choices you've made, but the 
the the way you've made the choices, the 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 way you've decided to implement the choices that you've sure. made, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so like for example, like say, you know, you want to quit your job. Yeah. You know, and and you work with really fantastic, amazing people. And you can go out in a blaze of glory and fuck all of those people over and yeah, potentially have regret about that, right? Or you can go out in a way that doesn't fuck those people over, but still like leaves a mark. Oh, you just you nailed it saying? on the fucking head. This is exactly why I wanted to talk about it is that nuance right there. That idea of like living this kind of, um, you know, sort of free for all life and like having this existence that like where maybe it's a little hedonistic where you're like, you know, I'm living for myself, no regrets, but then also like, should you have some regrets and should right. you take other people into consideration? I think that's with those? exactly yeah. it. I think that exactly what you just said yeah. is, is sort of the, that distinction of like, okay, yeah. I mean, I can go ahead and make these choices and not worry about consequences <laughs> or I can, you know, make these choices and have the consequences affect me and potentially have some regret about that sure. and maybe still not regret the ultimate choice. Yeah. Right. But a, regret the outcome or regret the way it made people feel or while making the choice. Exactly. Yeah. Because I mean, I think that's where all the nuance comes in. And I think that like we're often like sort of pigeonholed or, or, or that's the way we think about it is like, well, this is what's best for me. But when you do think about the world that way, you aren't thinking about a really full picture, not a, a three dimensional picture. You're thinking about a one dimensional picture because you're just thinking about you. Oh, I love that. Um, I, so yes, yes, yes. To everything you said, I think, uh, I, as, as a young person, I somehow got my fucking hands on a copy of um, the Fountainhead, right? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, Ayn listen. Rand, I listen, live though. without regret. I know. Listen, I, listen. listen, I thought the Ayn Rand movies were fucking amazing when I was young, so. <laughs> the movies yeah. were it was bad. But, terrible. Terrible. But, 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 absolutely okay, horrible. So, but listen, so I read The Fountainhead and romanticized the fuck out of it. I also read Atlas Shrugged, The Virtue of Selfishness, also, all of it. And I really kind of sort of um, fell in love with this idea of objectivism, which if you folks aren't familiar with, it's basically this idea of like, essentially it boils down to you doing what's right for you, you know, doing the best you can do really just not like, like, um, uh, what is that word where you're doing things for other people? Selflessness. Yeah, but there's a better word for it. Um, anyway, so staying the fuck away from that and just being selfish and just making all the right decisions for you. If you do that and if everybody does that, the world will, you know, function in a more harmonious way. Like and it's it, it just doesn't work that way. Right. Well, I mean, the thing about it, first of all, is that altruism. It's Sorry. Okay. Altruism. Yeah. The thing about that objectivism is is it's not objectivism at all it's subjectivism well do you know what i'm saying yeah but 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 her theory is literally called objectivism i understand yeah. that that's what i'm saying though is that it's not a in any way objective because it's not an objective good that you're seeking it's, it's a subjective, subjective good. good yes so the idea that it's objectivism at all is already like I, a I, false idea to me do you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah i mean the, the narrative is super problematic and i honestly like well when i was younger it was it, there's no other reason that it was just kind of like obscure and like interesting and that's why i agree it. and it appealed to me when i was younger as well because i liked the idea that like i loved this idea that i am only responsible for myself sure and i'm only responsible to make myself happy right which in a lot of ways yes that's true yeah but when I'm not concerned or when I just don't have to worry about the effects of that on other people around me, like that's kind of where it like loses me yeah. down. You know what I'm well, saying? But as a, as a youngin, I thought that was great because like, listen, I'm not, I'm not responsible for, for your feelings. Yeah. And you think, you know, like, oh wait, no, I'm actually doing the best by doing the best what's for me that, you know, which doesn't actually work. And I mean, considering the, you know, when, where Ayn Rand, like her life and what she like grew up in and when, where she came from. I mean, understandably the circumstances were so different 
And the whole situation is just, it's out of touch with reality. But that being said, there's kind of this romantic idea of like, no fucking regrets. Like, you know, this whole idea of like, all's fair in love and war, no regrets, all this other like, like cliches that, I don't know, I really, really leaned into as a young person. And in some ways, I feel like, it, you know, the things that I've done in my life, and it, it, it made me do some pretty fucking courageous things. Now, you know, I mean, regrets, we'll get into that a little yeah. bit. Do I have regrets about those courageous things? This is a different story. But it did give me that sort of like kind of push to like do these things. And like the idea like of regret, like looming down on me was such a force in making me do kind of ridiculous shit yeah I mean ridiculous I shit I think that's fair for me as well and there's also something else which I think is actually it is something that I still actually do sort of live by and um it was something that my dad said to me a long time ago that his mom had said to him yeah and it was something about like I don't know I can't remember what I was trying to make a decision about uh but it had to do, you know, money is always an issue, right? Sure. If you're trying to do whatever, money is always going to be an issue if you are a person without money. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. And so uh, my dad said to me, you know, you don't want to make a decision like this based on money. He's like, you want to make a decision like this based on your actual, like, it, because if you make every decision based on money, you're going to regret most of your life. He's like, you're going to be on your deathbed thinking like, oh, should I have worked that day? Or yeah. should I have, you know, taken that day off and done X, Y, or Z? You know yes. what I'm saying? And and that has kind of lived with me. And I, 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 I definitely take that with me. I mean, like, certainly, I mean, there's a limit to that, obviously, right? I mean, like, I, you can't live without you know what though my problem is is that i didn't see that limit that that idea what you're talking about right now what your dad said somehow or another that was said to me or something so I, I grabbed that at some point in a young age and i did not fucking let go and it put me in a little bit of a pickle which i'll get into it oh me yeah. too listen like i have been <laughs> It's very, very so deeply in debt that there is no crawling out of it, like to the point where like I couldn't get a checking account. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I've I've oh, been yeah. to all the places like in terms <laughs> of all the things. But I mean, like, I still think that's good advice. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. like, you know, within your means, you know, if, if something is is hinging on, you know, a a little bit of money, you know, like just yeah. fucking do it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, money's not going to do anything for you at the end. At the end, no, it's no, not. You're going to be, but you know what's going to yeah. do something for you is that fucking weekend trip that you decided yeah. to take, even though you had to take the weekend off and didn't get any money that weekend, right? Yes. Because you're because you are living that kind of a lifestyle where you know you are dependent on your paycheck. If you don't work, you don't get paid. Lots of us live that way. <laughs> So I, um, I'll just, I'll break it down to you. I am 42 right now. Right. Uh, I have never had a credit. You're so young. I mean, yeah. like no, I no, was no. born in 1935. So like, I love that you are <laughs> like, just no, such, listen though, that you are my connection to the youth. Shut up. So I've I never had credit. I never had anything because of everything we're talking about. I, when I say I lived it to the fullest, I mean, I lived everywhere right in this country I have had the best experiences I have lived 10 fucking lives I would not trade that for anything in the world now here's kind of in the middle the crux like I'm at the point now where for some reason or another I don't live that life and I don't know why I, I don't it's not fear I just don't know that I want to as much like if the right person in the right circumstance came I would do anything but like also I'm not as like bold as to you know I moved to I'm a, I fucking moved to California with like $400 multiple times <laughs> I've moved all over the country I've lived everywhere I've done everything I've been poor I've you know New York City this that and the other everything but like now I kind of bask in these comforts right like I'm just like life and I'm just the idea of changing it is not as attractive or romantic as it was yeah however I am completely okay with every choice I made because I the idea of not having those experiences and then 
what if I was still where I'm at now? Then it would be so fucking depressing. Now, I'm finally at a place where financially I'm actually pretty good. Like I really raised my credit score up. I got everything in check. Everything's good. I don't. And now, so now I've kind of had both, right? Yeah. And I don't know what, like, I certainly don't care as much about this shit as I did the other stuff. Yeah. I will say that, like, yeah, there were times where I was legit running from, like, creditors. <laughs> like, oh, not absolutely. Myself, not myself as much, but, like, my partner, we had a car together, and there were times where we owed fucking money on that car, and there were times where it was, like, you know, um, and I was a big part of that. Like, I was just, like, let's just go to a different state. Let's do this, you know? And yeah, was it, were they terrible decisions? Yeah. But like that whole idea of no regrets, that mantra was like so deep and like grained in me that like I made some craziest choices. Okay. But, but I, here's the question. Yes. I get it. Okay. I get where you're coming from with all of that. But yeah. here's the question. When you're living that life of no regrets, no, re- no regrets. No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> um, how often does it turn out to be a regrettable thing, right? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, so, the, I mean, in terms of like the consequences around it, like, so you make this really crazy, wild, awesome decision and you go and do the thing, but then, and it's wonderful and amazing and all the things. And then when it kind of comes to full fruition, it's like... Oh, if only I hadn't done that, yes. then X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. those kinds of like, so you're trying to live a life without regrets, but then that ends up being a regrettable fucking choice. So I've thought about this since we just, since we decided to talk about this, I thought about it a lot and, and I'm not trying to make any like proclamation here, but I will say not one time. There's not one thing that happened that wasn't worth the reason that it happened because only because I'm and I'm not saying go out there and just fuck all and whatever because I was like very very blessed in the way that I was able to like have the most ridiculous incredible adventures and I you know was lucky to have that with another person often most times and stuff and we made some regrettable decisions as far as finances go and yeah it was harder to get it together at a later age but we did do it and we had those fucking experiences under our belt and so yeah I mean I can't think no there are there are some regrets that I do have that I will get into but overall Big picture, the things that I did when I was younger. No, I don't regret it because I've had the coolest life. Yeah. Now, regrets. Well, I have have a few. You do. (laughs) I have a fucking few. I mean, I think that I've made some definite regrettable choices. Sure. Choices that I, you know, look back on and think, oh, I wish I had not taken that path. But then I'm also of the mindset of, but I do like where I have come and yeah. the person that I've become because of the different choices and different regrettable decisions that I've sure. made. Right. You know, so it's sort of like, even if I may regret, you know, my behavior in a certain situation or making the choice to, you know, well, start doing heroin, for example, like that, yeah. that's a really big fucking regret. Right. That sounds regrettable. That sounds it's regrettable. very yeah. regrettable and regretful. Um, but at the same time, it's like, but I am happy with where I've gotten to. And and could I have gotten here without making those choices? Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, a million I percent. certainly regret all of the pain that I put like my family through like a million times. Like that is so regret regrettable, regretful. Um, but you know, so like that's sort of like kind of that's I think the tricky part about regret you know what I'm saying because I do like generally speaking I think my life's pretty fucking awesome like I really actually like where my life is headed and where I've like kind of come from and where I've gone you know and I think that good things are like still in the mix for me so you don't have like this kind of like looming feeling of regret of like decisions you made like oh yeah because I feel like some people do literally live their life in that like shadow you know what I mean like like regret is like a a big part of their life I I I agree and I think that like I think that's something that you and I both have in common is that you and I have both made a lot of like crazy ass wild motherfucking choices wild and so (laughs) in that like we've both had a lot of like experiences that 
would not have happened without those choices yes and without the sometimes regrettable consequences but like ultimately it's like you know it's like some people wait until they retire to live their lives right but i don't not feel us. like either of us not have us done that. <laughs> And I think that that's something that like I I do value so much about the life that I've lived. You know, it's like I don't feel like I have to look forward to retirement. Like I feel like I've lived a fucking like cool ass existence. Same. Now I seriously do want to retire and look forward to that as well. Right. Yeah. But, you know, it's not like. I mean, I feel like I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, these are the the things that I want to do. I'm going to make happen. There are certain people that like live in that, that idea of like, oh, retirement, you know, I'm only going to wait for that. Yes. I feel like, I feel like that is actually the kind of sort of um, attitude with, especially in this country, like people like, it's a real wait, wait and see, a real wait, like uh, you're going to be rewarded at the end yes. of this like bullshit. Like I have a work friend yeah. who... um. I was recently texting with and he is uh, he's he and his wife are pregnant. And they're about to have a baby and blah, blah, blah. These wonderful things are happening for them. But like a couple of years ago when I first met him, you know, it was like, so, you know, why haven't you proposed to your girlfriend yet? And because they had been dating for a long time and, and he was very clear that he wanted to marry her. And part of the reason was because he didn't have the money saved up. Right. To so, propose? To propose. Oh, for like a ring? Well, no, not just for a ring, but for a house. Like he wanted to have all his ducks in order. In or and it, I am I was just like, God, but what if that never happens? Right. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, you're gonna you're gonna like miss out on having this great like love affair if you don't <laughs> right? just, like yes. fucking go for it. Like, what are you waiting for? Oh like, my god, you I know? Wonder, I wonder if that's a in in kind of like a heteronormative way more common between hetero folks yeah i mean i don't know, I, I don't know. I actually i, I feel I can't like comment you can't comment on that cause... you can't comment on it you can't speak on it but you can comment on it you dork uh no comment, comment to the media i'm sorry paparazzi i'm busy right <laughs> thank now. you you're right you're right we're having a podcast but no comment to the media <laughs> That's fair. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, I literally proposed with, like, $11 in my pocket. Did we get married? No. But <laughs> still, we had a fucking bomb-ass engagement. I proposed under a tree, and then I looked at the name of it, and it was called the Faggus Tree. <laughs> and just, it was a great story. Perfect. On Christmas Absolutely. Day. Absolutely. Don't do that. Yeah, well. But, like, still, it was beautiful. And the Boston Jesus comment, yeah. was born, and let's get married. <laughs> no, but it was, like, a fucking beautiful experience that had nothing to do with I can't imagine having to like well I can't I gotta fucking be able to afford well this a place is what I'm yeah. saying so I mean like that kind of like God, it takes the that romance kind of, out of life you know like sort of yes and so I mean like I mean I don't feel like I've got those kinds of like regrets like I yeah. you know I mean no yeah and I'm glad for that but I, I, I definitely do have other kinds of regrets but I also I guess I'm kind of glad for those too I can't I there are so many people in the world and so many people I know that I see that like follow this really traditional path and I don't know if that's bad or good I feel like having kids changes things a bit too though because I like personally I love children and I would love to have kids and like my nieces and nephews are everything to me and I would make concessions for them and it wouldn't be a regretful thing like there's nothing I would rather do any night there's never a night I'd rather do something crazy than hang out with them like I love them to death. So yeah. I can see making concessions for kids and like not being regretful. But that's personally like for sure. some people are regretful having kids. You know yeah. what I mean? But like also, I'm, I mean, I had some really great experiences. So I'm coming at it from that perspective. But I do know a lot of people who just had kids really early on and haven't had those experiences. Now they've had different experiences because they do have kids. But sure. Like, and I'm sure that like for some of them, you know, Having kids might have been like in some ways regrettable. Yeah. But at the same time has also brought them like kind of the same kind of like life experiences and joy sure, that, yeah. that they never would have well, experienced otherwise, you know, kind yeah. of like similar to, you know, we've made regrettable choices, but we still don't necessarily regret the consequences. No, right? I mean, but I will say at this point in my life now, the one thing I do regret is not having kids. 
And oh, you yeah. know that about me. You yeah. know, I want I want kids. And yeah. I mean, I'm at the point where I'm probably too old to have them have them. But like Well, you would be considered a geriatric pregnancy, I can tell you that. I fucking hate you. Yeah. Well, listen, my sister was 37 and they were like, you're geriatric pregnancy. God, I so. hate this world. Right? But anyway, I do regret that. And I mean, I mean like, why are you calling a 37 year old woman geriatric <laughs> in any way, shape or form? It's not 1235 any longer. It's 1235. 2021, 2022, <laughs> what the fuck ever. Yes. No, I, I mean, I do. I, I do regret that. And I mean, maybe it'll come in the way of like, you know, either a partner or like, uh, adoption or so I don't know whatever yeah. the case is but like you know um but in a lot of ways especially as close as you are with all of your like, nieces and nephews nieces yeah and nephews like you are definitely forming and shaping those little minds you know what I'm saying yeah. and those little personalities and you're having an impact on their world sure I like to hear that yeah yeah, yeah. I, that's absolutely true you know what's weird though that we're the child bearing regret thing didn't come at the right time like it would have been great if it would have came in my late 20s <laughs> but the fact that it came in my like very 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 late 30s was like what the f well, well wow, you're really you know setting what, me up here you know what that is though I feel like that's pretty common I, really? I do feel I like that's common for women who have made a choice not to have kids and they are kind of coming up on that age of like no longer being able to yeah. like potentially have children because before you were, you had a choice. Yeah. And it's getting to a point where you no longer have a choice. I know, right? And so that's where, like, that's where I think a lot of women, like, or I guess maybe not women is the right word, the reproductive beings. Sure. Um, people who have children, childbearing beings. Um, you know, I think that is pretty common for, for people when they get to that point. You know, I... I can't say that that's been true for me. I mean, like, I'm definitely we going through about some this, perimenopause, yeah. but like, I'm I'm very pleased with not have ha having children had yeah. children. Yes, I am so happy to be an auntie, and I'm loving that life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I do like all the. I like the being able stuff, to be yeah. sick. I like being able to oh. like, go on vacation. You know, not yeah. well. I don't like being sick, but you know what I mean. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Being able to fucking lay down and not have to yeah. fucking answer somebody's <laughs> question. I want feed them. I want I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, mom. <laughs> well, guess what? I'm sick. <laughs> okay. Well, no, See, I then I would I, I would have you, a yeah. life way more full of regret if I had had children. I love that for you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that even I'm I don't know that I'm regretful. I don't know that I was meant to. I don't feel like that that biological thing, but it's just more of like an emotional thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I still feel like it'll happen in some other way. Yeah. You know, I'll bet it will. Yeah. So I have a question. Do you have any, I don't know how to word this well, but any regrets about people in your life? Like, I know you're obviously in a relationship, blah, 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 like all this stuff. So like, it'd be hard to say like, you know, regrets with your ex-husband or regrets with whatever an ex, but do you have any of those? And if not, why? And if so, why? I think the only regrets that I have, like, in terms of, like, well, I definitely have some regrettable exes. That is 100% okay. true. Definitely okay. regrettable exes, exes that I wish I could, like, if I could, like, what is that that movie, The Sunshine of Your Mind? The clear one, or the Total S. Recall, whatever the fuck it is, where they clear your fucking mind. <laughs> Give me. Oh, wait, it's Terminator <laughs> of the Terminator of the Mind. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Sunshine of the Great. Spotless Mind. Spotless and Endless Love. Go ahead. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's the one where they yes, yeah, erase wipe the it, memories. Yeah. yeah. Sure, you do. Like, if if I could erase certain people from my memory, yeah, I absolutely would. Yes. Because they were regrettable people. Like like people that are just like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed that I dated that person. Yeah. Because that's so interesting. Because they're just like, ew, in some way, shape, or form. And I also like, I mean, to be fair, like I didn't have a great picker when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Like I picked a lot of like really douchey, narcissistic, very charismatic and attractive people but uh, that's kind of all they had going on God, you know I'm what I'm such saying? a fucking sucker for that same and so like so I've, I've made some regrettable decisions sure, that sure. way right so not necessarily the best people like 
substantially, but substantially they're not do you think that i feel they... a little bit like alexis rose i know right we're, we have so much of that <laughs> do you think that they regret you oh i'm sure i've made them regret me yeah at some point or another interesting um maybe not i don't know um in terms of the exes that i don't regret but i do have like some maybe regret around like the way I may have treated them or whatever. Do you sure. know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like I, I can say that definitively for my ex-husband, for example, you know, I mean like uh, most of my other exes I feel okay about. I think that there were some things with him that I could have handled in a better way. And sure. I do kind of regret some of that stuff, but I mean, but at the same time, to be fair, I mean, we're in a good place, you know, at this point in our lives with each other and like, we're good friends. So it's like, I know that there's no like harbored ill feelings on his part. So I'm not particularly worried about that. It's more like, you know, sort of looking back on myself and reflecting back on who, how I wish I could have been a better person. Does that make sense? Absolutely. What yeah. about you? Uh, well, you know, I thought a lot about this. So there's this part of my brain that's hardwired to think of the other person first. And so like, yes, in my head, there are people that I regret entirely. But also then I start thinking this weird thing. Like I have this ex-girlfriend who is now married with kids and stuff. And I there's this weird fucking part of me that can't get over the fact that I'm like, well, if we didn't date, she wouldn't be here and she wouldn't have met that dude. But then she also wouldn't have those kids. And so then I'm like, I know that sounds so fucking insufferable. And I'm like, it, but I start feeling like, OK, I guess I can be that for her because I feel I can't imagine. I don't I, I don't even talk to her anymore. But also like. I, the idea of like somebody not having their kids or I'm like, OK, I can take one for the team. Which is so fucking weird, but that's how my head works. So yeah. I'm like, no, I can't regret it. Like, a regrettably, yeah. Although, although I will say she was awesome in so many ways. We had such a fun relationship. We had such good times together. But like the heartbreak I went through, you know, worth was it worth you know the time we had together? Probably not. But also then I'm like, well, if we were together, she wouldn't be here, and she wouldn't have met that douche. Which I can say he's a douche. So I don't care about him. But then she would never kids, and then it's like. I don't like to think about anybody not having their kids. So then I'm like, okay, so what does any of that have to do with you? Nothing. But I'm also like, I can't regret it because the whole reason that she okay. met him. I know, I know. But I know. you can regret it on, I know. on your I own know, behalf, but I know, right? but but I will say that is a weird, like emotional crutch that I have that I can't get rid of. Like even another ex girlfriend I have who's married, where I'm like, well, if we weren't together, then she would have met a wife, and, and it's so stupid. It makes me feel like a martyr, and I'm not trying to like make myself out like that, but that my brain, yeah, tries to like make things like, okay, well, don't regret it because these people got to certain places in their life, and I'm not. Again, I'm not. I'm not self deprecating. I am in some ways, but not in the way that I'm like would really sacrifice myself. All these people, and I'm not like. You know, I know I'm worth more than that. And I know I'll pro maybe I'll end up with somebody and it'll be like, great, whatever. But like, also, I do have this fucking weird ass feelings of like, fuck, yeah, OK, I guess I'll take them for the team because that had to happen. I had to happen for them to get there. And it's weird. And it's, it's weird that you think about it in those terms as opposed to like in terms of like first person because you're thinking more about like I second do. person yep. stuff as opposed to your own 100 like, do so in terms of your own regrets though again outside I of whether or not this person would have had their kids or that yeah, person would have had their kids if everything or, else would have happened the same yeah the i do kind of regret it because like i'm not even friends with the the other ex that has kids i'm not we're not even friends we don't talk we don't exist in the same world like so yeah what what do you regret though is it like the way you, like it played out. I guess I like regret the fact that we moved on from friendship into a relationship. We were best friends first. We were best friends for a while. And we had a really fucking cool friendship. And then we decided to just be together and move out to Las Vegas and be in a relationship. And it was like this. And it was really fun. Actually, I can't even say that I regret it because that whole time was really fucking fun. But there's this part of me that just wishes we would have just stayed friends. Gotcha. And not 
got into any of that. So it wouldn't have turned into what it turned into. So it's, it's regret of like how like things kind of ended up as opposed to regretting it's regret like, about the making things the, so, that you a- ended up actually doing, right? It's, it's regret about the fucking day that we both decided to walk out of a restaurant job that this job I loved and I fucked it up so bad because of one dumb afternoon and being in love with this. Fu- First of all, I was in love with this girl. This girl like she just I, I was in love with her and she was my best friend and it was all fucked up and weird but also I would have literally jumped in a volcano if she asked me to like I was in love with her and we had a we worked together and we were best friends and we worked together and we had this fucking awful day and we were both she was like let's just get fucking fucking done with this job and I'm like I am too and I totally walked out and the stupid part is is that job was amazing and it was a restaurant job but I made a ton of money there it was a great job I worked with great people it would have taken me a lot of places and I fucked it all up I would have followed that girl literally into a yeah. bear cave so do you ever like kind of go down those paths though of like in your own mind mm-hmm. of like what would have happened if I hadn't have made that decision yeah that I would have you know probably I, mean? I would have definitely still been in Boston I would but do you do you have those sort of like yeah. In your head, like fantasies of like, oh, okay, what if I had made a different decision yes. here? I don't want to because I realistically, I ha- so I'm the type of person that's like, there's the glass half full, glass half empty person. And I am a million percent the glass half full. I have to find the good in everything. I can't sit in shit. Like I can't sit in bad. Like I am very disappointed in myself that I made that choice with her. And I made that choice with her a couple of times, to be fair. I'm very disappointed in the way that I did certain things, but also I'm not the type of person that can sit and like, look at all that and just think about like the bad. I don't, I don't sit in bad. I can't do it. Even if, if there's anything bad, I have to look at the good and find the good immediately. My brain does not function in like fucking sewage. It just doesn't. You know what I mean? Like I have to like think of all the positive. But yeah, I've had those moments where I'm like, fuck, that was such a bad choice. I shouldn't have done that. I should have done this. I shouldn't have done that. We didn't go together. I would have stayed in Boston. It would have been fine. She would have stayed there too. She probably would end up marrying a dude anyway, have those kids, blah, blah, blah. But like it happened. So yeah, I guess I have to like, the way I have to look at it is like she was meant to have those kids. Yeah. She was meant to come here for whatever reason. I wish her well in that way. It sucks that it was on my like back, but whatever. And so I don't know. Well, something that I've had to actually sort of kind of come to terms with as a choice that I made, as opposed to trying to blame it on somebody else and like not yes. take, you know, that kind of responsibility is that like in terms of like regret. Right. And it's something that kind of bubbles up for me every now and again with Amos. And it's the one thing in our relationship that will bubble up for me in terms of regret. And that is when we first got together, she told me that she was willing to leave Michigan. And like not in the near term, but, you know, eventually. And um since then, like, it seems sort of like, <laughs> mm, probably not going to happen. Maybe eventually it will. And so every now and again, it's one of those things that kind of bubbles up for me as like, uh, mm, I feel like I was a little bit misled. And at the same time, like, I also know that I was not misled, right? Like, I mean, she was upfront with me about where she was coming from about things, right? But... I made a choice that I do every now and again, think back on and think, "Mm, do I really want to be in Michigan? And it's mostly just about that, right? It's never about like the relationships that I've made. It's never about any of those other things. It's about like, am I living where I want to be living? And I mean, if we're talking geographically, no, absolutely. I'm not living where I'm living love where I'm living or you know what I mean all of those things but when it kind of comes down to like the choices that I've made and all of the things like I am again really happy with my life and the choices that I've made you know but I do have that sort of internal struggle every now and again when Amos and I are arguing and you know we have those things that come up and it's like I made a choice to stay here for you but then I have to sort of kind of come back to it and be like no you know what Yvonne you made this choice for yourself yeah I did this to myself. Like she didn't say you have to stay here for me. 
never. Those words never, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I do have that struggle. That's interesting. That comes yeah. up every now and again for me. Sure. But that's sort of the only no, that, kind of thing I mean, in terms of my yeah. current relationship. That's a, that's, I mean, that's a big one though. Like, you know, the idea that we can all go wherever and we're here does kind of, you know, I wonder with her, with my ex, what her regrets are. I shouldn't, cause I shouldn't care, but I am curious because yeah. the fact that she, like one of the wildest things to me is that she lives here still. And like, she didn't grow up here. She I know she up, had no roots here. No, like, she grew up in Massachusetts. The, yeah. You were but the she, branch that helped yeah. the apple fall or whatever. And she stayed here. She lives like in Westland in Michigan. And I'm always like, girl, I wonder if you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? You know, whatever. Yeah. I, I don't I mean, know. I think about that stuff too. Like in terms of, you know, the some of impact you've had on other people. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that of, of like that, like sometimes too, like if that's, if they sit back and think like, well, yeah. I wouldn't have done that because of this or this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's huh. weird. Regrets are weird. Like it's, it a, is. it's a, it's a really weird <sighs> thing to, yeah. I don't want to regret things though, because I don't feel like there's any satisfaction in that. Like, no, there's absolutely none. I think we all know that. Like, re regret sucks. But like, also, even when it's yeah. something simple as like, I regret saying that to you in the way that I said it to you, you know, like, even that kind of regret sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like, oh, I'm sorry. I said it in this shitty kind of way as opposed to. Yeah. A more articulate way or yes. something like with more consideration. Yeah. yeah. I mean like those, even those tiny regrets, they fucking wear you down, man. Yeah. I, you know, and I, th and then I think about more casual relationships I've had in the last couple of years, like people I've dated and like, I probably feel like they, some of them regret me. <laughs> Well, what about friendships? Do uh, you have friendship regrets at all? Like, I mean, even if they're like no longer friends of yeah, yours, like I, people that you are no longer in contact with. I have with one big one. Have, like a regret yeah. over. Yeah, and I can say her name because we're not, we're not friends. We're not, but Allison. Allison is a huge fucking regret. She was, Allison. I know who she you're was talking about, yeah. one of my best friends. And truth be told, I, I don't know what I could have done differently. So I don't know in that way what. I don't so know the what regret, that regret would like, be. Sort of revolves around more like losing the friendship as yeah. opposed to I like, suppose I, I, you've done. I'm not pretending that I didn't do things because I know myself and I can definitely be like a dick and careless. And I'm sure I did do things that, you know, because of right now I can sit back and think like, oh, I didn't do anything because I, in my head, I don't think I did, but I'm very sure that I did because that's how it goes, you know, like you don't. I, like I'm not aware of all the shit that I've done and things that I've said and in you know even things I haven't even thought about that I said like who knows but yeah Allison is probably as far as friends go one of the biggest regrets that I have ever um other than that I mean I I, I keep in contact with a lot of people yeah like uh I do have a couple falling outs but like one of the falling outs, Christine, I can say her name because I'm sure she'll listen. I don't have a regret about that. Like yeah. that we fell out, but for a very good reason. Yeah. Other than that, like, yeah, I don't, I don't, if I knew that I hurt somebody, I probably would have those regrets. Yeah. I'm sometimes a little careless about it, but yeah, Allison would be the big one. Yeah. What about you? Oh, you know, I mean, I think I have some regrets in terms of like people that I've lost touch with over sure. the years, you know, especially some friends from like Los Angeles and from like my youth. Yeah, my I youth, guess. Yeah. Youths. My youths. Um, but in terms of like adult friendships here in like, since I've been in Michigan, like I don't really have regrets over that stuff outside of like, you know, when I'm just being a drunk asshole and, you know, do regretful things and have to apologize to people. Right. I mean, like outside of that, like, I mean, like, I don't worry about like th there, uh, there have been a few friends that I've had here in this area that I'm no longer friends with. And I don't miss those friendships. I'm sure. grateful for those friendships to be gone out of my life. You know what I'm saying? So there's no regret that yeah. way. Outside of maybe potentially meeting those people and 
allowing them into my life. Yeah, that can be a big one. That is potentially my only regret in terms of friendships here in, and, in my Metro Detroit years. And as far as like exes go too, I have a couple exes here that like I'm, I think of so fucking highly and I love them and I regret some of the things that I did. Um, nothing good came out of it and it was bad. And yeah. I, yeah, those are big regrets I have because I respected those people and like, I love them still to this day yeah. and I'm very close with them. And, you know, I made some really fucking shitty decisions and like careless decisions. And again, no regrets living for the moment. Yeah. And like I, at the expense of other people. And I, those are big regrets. That's exactly it. Those expense are big of regrets. other people yep. when it's at the expense of somebody else. It's, it's shitty. Yeah. Those are big regrets I have, but I don't know. I guess we all live life sort of, you know, I think the other thing that I have to say though is, is that, even though I've been going through some things, like I said at the top of the show, um, Swedish fish, for example, been going through those. Um, <laughs> Swedish fish. Swedish fish club. Um, it, it's sort of one of those other times of my life where I am sort of, you know, reevaluating things and kind of coming back around to not wanting to live the rest of my life with regret. Right. So yeah. like trying to figure out what that means now in this next chapter of my life. Right. And like trying to figure out how to transition out of the job that I have into other things that I would rather Podcasting. do, you know, absolutely. Puppeteering, yeah. Puppeteering is my life's blood. I mean, without it, I don't think I could breathe. So, Fair. I mean, that's what I would like to start focusing my time on. And so, yeah, I mean, so that's kind of where I am, you know, that we are in this transitional period looking to have no regrets again. Yeah. Well, I feel like my transitional period happened a few years back when I really kind of settled into living here and I kind of started being friends with people that I lost touch with before because of my shitty actions, you know, and some of our good friends now that yeah. I reconnected with. And I feel like I really sort of worked through those regrets and I'm good with those people now. So it's better. But yeah, I mean, I think it's really important to own up to your fucking mistakes because you know what? Like sometimes you can think of them as like, eh, you know, no regrets, this and the other. But if it is like expense of another person, it will catch up with you and it will fucking hurt them and hurt you in the long run. And on that note, I also think that reaching out to those people and saying whatever you need to say to them in terms of your apologies. Fine. Great. Wonderful. Do that if that's what you feel like you need to do. But I also think that none of that requires a response from those people. A hundred percent. Those people do not owe you anything. Nope. So if they do not respond to you, recognize that as a consequence of your actions and them living without well, regret. Well, well, if it's not the consequences of my actions, yes. You know, I mean, yeah. sometimes that happens too. No regrets. No regrets. Speaking of regrets. Let's regret our crushes. Let's do it. Regrets. I've had a few, Regrets. Regrets. but too many to mention. I think that's right. I don't know about you, but too many to mention. You I, got I, a crush? I'm waiting to see this one regret. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's see. If you could see her face, you would see the face of a thousand regrets. Oh. A thousand regrets. Pure regret. Yes. Um, crushes. Crushes. Do the crush thing. Crush, crush, crush. Yeah. I want to know your crush, Nicole. It is not a good episode without the crush from you. <laughs> My crush this week is Haley Steinfeld. Do you know who she is? I have zero okay. idea. See, she's a little young to be fair, but also, so she was in the show Dickinson, which is about Emily Dickinson, and it is one of the most beautiful fucking queer shows on the planet. Ah. Yeah, and it's on um, Apple TV, and it's, I, I, I feel like anybody, I, most people probably know it. Anybody who's anybody would know Dickinson, but anyway. Obviously, I don't, and so I'm nobody. It's so good, <laughs> and it's like, it's cut with all this, like, new music, and it's, um... Uh, uh, yeah. So Haley Steinfeld and Ella Hunt, and Ella Hunt is queer in real life, and and she plays um, what is Emily's Sue? 
She plays Sue. So it's like this like queer relationship and it's so much representation. It's beautifully shot and it's a beautiful show. And yeah, so Emily, I mean, Emily Dickinson, obviously, obviously, but Haley is my crush this week. I love that. Yeah. So wait, what's the show called again? Dickinson. Okay. I got to check so that out. It's good. on Apple TV. Yes. Oh my God. My mom will die. It's she loves Emily Dickinson. So beautiful. Mother, are you listening? I know you are. Watch it. <laughs> we'll watch it together. Lady La. We'll watch it together. <laughs> All right. So my crush this week is Marianne Rendon. And I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. Uh, but she is in this show. Have you have you seen the show Imposters? The Imposters. Yes, I fucking love that show. Is that uh, the girl? She plays Jules Langmore. She plays the girlfriend. One of the girlfriends. Also she plays super the wife. Hot. Yes, the wife. Super the, hot. Yeah, the ex-wife of. And I love her because, like, her character is super weird and like surprising and interesting and funny and kind of all of those things. Sure. And I, I kind of really enjoy that about her. It's a great show. If you guys are looking for something to watch that's like I mean, kind of a thriller. It's Imposters is yeah. brilliant. I yeah. mean, well, it's all about con artists and, yes, and the it's like. so good. So, yeah, if you're not into that kind of thing, you're not going to be into the show. It's but such it's, a good show. I though. think it's enjoyable and yeah, I really think she's a great asset to it. And like, uh, seeing her blossom in in uh, Mexico is just so wonderful. I love that. Awesome. (laughs) Okay, so uh, socials. Queered Podcast on Instagram. At Queerdos on Facebook. Facebook. And uh, yeah, leave us a message. Rate, Um, review, subscribe. Please. And uh, yeah, we're going to start dropping episodes on Fridays. That's the new plan. Yeah, so so it's no longer see you next Tuesday. Sorry. It's, It's more of a cunt as opposed to a cunt. What? It's a conf. What does that mean? See you next Friday. Oh, okay. Sorry. (laughs) I'm dumb. No, but yeah, it's just easier to get it done through the week and especially. It gives us a little bit of wiggle room in terms of editing and all the things. All right. We do it all ourselves. Because we're working nine to five. I wish you would have written like working three, two, four. (laughs) 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 But yeah, it's nine to five. So um yeah. So we will see you next Friday. And be weird. Stay queer. We love you. Bye. Bye. Oh. As psychologists. <laughs> it just ran <laughs> definitely do <laughs> Sarah narcissism. As psychologists, but it's That's probably anti mixtape, right? I mean, I mean, I feel like we should definitely do it. I'm Sarah Narcissism as psychologist, but it. That's probably how you get some random ass weird notes that you're like.